Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to look at the program Microsoft Visio and we'll look at some ways that we can save time when we're creating our diagrams. So the first tip is if you want to add multiple of the same shape rather than having to drag the individual shapes on maybe add the stamp uh, tool to your quick access toolbar. So the way that I did that was to go to the drop down arrow at the end of the quick access toolbar selected more commands when this panel comes up i changed the list on the left from popular commands to all commands i then found the stamp tool in the list so the quickest way to do that click in it press s that just moves you straight down to the s's if i now scroll a bit further down there we go stamp tool i highlighted it and pressed add to add it on the right hand side. Now what that allows me to do is if I press on the stamp tool I can now pick an item and rather than dragging and dropping I can just press and add those items on. When you're done remember to change it back to the pointer tool and again nice little tip here control one turns it back to the pointer tool. So tip number two is to do with putting numbers on shapes. So you'll see that these tables I've got have got numbers on them. What I'd like to do is these vendor booths, I'd like to also number those. Now rather than me manually adding the numbers, if I go to the view ribbon, on the view ribbon you'll see there is a button that says add-ons. Now if I go into that, you'll see at the bottom of that list is Visio Extras and then we've got this option of Number Shapes. Now when it comes on it will add a number starting at 1 and going up by an interval of 1 and you can change that if you want. The number by default though will not appear after the words that you've already got, it will appear before the words. So if you want to change it so that it appears afterwards just go to the Advanced tab and then click Press OK and now I'm just going to move that off the screen so it's not in my way. I can now go and click on each vendor booth and now each vendor booth is getting a number. Now again when you're done just close this window otherwise anything else that you click on will get a number. Now whilst I'm on this diagram another thing that I'm going to do is I want to get the first three vendor booths to be in line with the fourth vendor booth. So I'm just going to first of all move the, the word in building lobby because that will get hidden underneath. Now to do that, rather than me having to manually drag those up and sort of guess by looking if they're aligned with each other, I'm first of all going to click on the vendor booth four which is in the correct position. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to click on vendor booth 3, 2 and 1. You'll notice that the highlight for vendor booth 4 is a bit thicker than the other three and that's really important because the vendor booth uh, in this case that's got the thickest border is the one that's in the place that all the others will move to. So on the home ribbon you'll see there is an align drop down and if I pick in that drop down you'll see there is an option for pretty much every direction I'm going to pick the option of top and you'll now see that they're all perfectly aligned the other thing that we can do as well is the gap between each vendor booth isn't equal now before I do that I'm just going to move vendor booth one across and we'll just do that using my arrow keys so that it sort of matches up with vendor booth four and it's important that your two end shapes are, are in the perfect position to begin with now if I select those items again, rather than me manually having to move these and, and work the space between 4 and 3 and 3 and 2 and 2 and 1, I can just go to position and I can do distribute horizontally and now they are all evenly spaced. So vendor booth 4 in this case and vendor booth 1 didn't move, uh, they stayed where they were, it was the other items that were moved okay so the next one that i'm going to look at 
is when you make in an organization chart. So within here, if I add a manager as an example, now if I want to put someone who reports to that manager in, what a lot of people do is they will grab another shape, they'll then put it in, then they'll use the connector tool to connect those items together. The easier way to do this is to grab hold of the, the shape that you want to put below, and rather than put it below, drop it on top of the original shape. That way it'll make a connector. Now if you want to put multiple shapes in, rather than having to manually drag and put an additional three of these in, I can go to multiple shapes, drag that on top, and I can choose the type of shape I want, and I can choose how many I want. Okay, and my final tip is to do with flow diagrams. So with flow diagrams, again, if I put my original shape in, what a lot of people would now do is they would go and they would add shapes below. But if you flow over the original shape that you put in, you'll notice these little arrowheads appear. And by going to an arrowhead, I can pick any of the first four shapes that appear here. So if I now want a decision, I can put that in from there. I can go and add a process. And you can build your diagram up using the options that are there. Now, what you've got to watch with this option is you need to be on the basic flowchart shapes for that to work. If I move to a different set of shapes, you'll notice that the arrows now don't give me the options. So that will only work when you are on this particular um, view. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, um, please subscribe. And if you want to get updates of when my videos are, are coming out, please press the notification bell. I plan to put out two videos a week um, on all the Microsoft products that are out here. If there's anything in particular that you want me to cover in a video, mention it in the comments, and if I can cover it, I will do. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.